you would think that this would be our first time, but it feels so much like the first time that we are able to meet and cut ribbon together. Um, it touches my heart to see so many people taking the time out. This is a work day, lunchtime. You could be eating lunch somewhere and you're with us. And we truly, truly appreciate it as you join us as we go through our ribbon cutting ceremony. I welcome each, of, each one of you and before you leave, we have cards because we're gonna draw for um, some gifts. We wanna pass out some gifts because we wanna show our love back to you for your love to us for showing up for this event. So if you would, we have cards, if you can fill them out and put it in the box towards the back. And we do have snacks for you as well that we don't wanna eat ourselves all by ourselves. So please share with us, okay? Um, and we're gonna move forward. Before we um, speak with the mayor, Lemmy, Jimmy is gonna come up and he's gonna pour libation. Let me first say, this is libation. This is not a love potion as the mayor would call it. Um, <laughs> but it is a libation in African customs Libation was always poured to include the ancestors involved in all that we do. So this is truly a celebration that we want our ancestors to be here with us so that they may be included in everything that we do from start to finish. We want our ancestors, um, you know, our mothers and fathers, great grandparents, who all those who played a part in our lives that, to bring us to the moments that we're in right now. This is what this libation is for. So as I go through the libation, when I pour water into the plant, the plant is always a symbolism of growth. As the plant grows, we also want to grow in our spirituality as well as our knowledge and our wisdom. Because life and nature clearly gives us clarity and understanding. So as I, as I speak and as I say ashe, when, I, when, I, when the water is poured in the plant, I'm going to say ashe and we ask all of you to say ashe. Ashe means for our ancestors to be with us. That's, that's what it means. So every time we pour, we say ashe. Okay. We call upon our ancestors far and near, fathers and mothers of our fathers, mothers and fathers of our mothers, to bear witness to all that we have done. And it is by their example that they continue to inspire us towards reclaiming our African minds, regenerating our African spirit, liberating our families and our communities, and restoring our greatness as a people. We pour libation to bring into our midst their venerable African spirit, radiating their great wisdom, their courage and dedication, and their unyielding commitment to victory by any means necessary. It is in the honor of our Creator, our ancestors, our mothers and fathers, our sisters and brothers, our children and their children, our grandparents, great-grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, and elders of our communities, those who have all transitioned, that we call upon your engaging spirit, your energy, and your soul, that it may manifest itself through all thoughts, words, and actions that we commit ourselves to. We pour this libation in your honor, in the honor of our Creator, and in the various manifestations of the Creator Spirit. We pour libation. I say, for our esteemed ancestors who laid the foundation for human civilization, and who provides the wisdom to which we live, and the models by which our lives are guided, we pour libation. And for our esteemed ancestors who suffered the atrocities and the horrors of our Ma'afa, but yet demonstrated the victorious power of the African spirit by maintaining their dignity, no matter the cost, we pour libation. And for our esteemed ancestors who survived and made it possible for us to be here today, to continue on the valiant fight for African liberation and vindication, we pour libation. And for our children and our children's children and future generations of Africans to come, that they too in their time will vindicate our race from all adversaries and to continue to imprint upon the world the great genius of African humanity. We pour libation. May the venerable spirit engulf this occasion to reaffirm our Africanity. It is done. Our creator is satisfied. Ashe. 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 Thank you. At, thank you. Thank you. At this time, we will now bring, uh, ask the mayor to come up and speak for us, as well as we can do the ribbon cutting ceremony. And at that, after that time, we will have several people to come up and speak about their experiences in the House of Hathor. Thank you. It's a great, great honor to be here today, not only because they're growing, the house is growing. Yes. Yes. 
That is a testimony in itself, folks. If you, if you had been to the old location, it was filled with love. Reflections on family, history, culture, all in one place. Right. And now they have room to grow. And what's even great, and, and you know this is meant to be, because if you look at the sign over there, guess who's the top billing? I don't think I have to say much more than that. You know, I mean, there's a reason for everything that happens, and I really appreciate uh, Jimmy and Angela and the community con constantly giving back, making the community better, showing up to public hearings. Thank you, Jimmy, for being there last <laughs> night, because it's important that people understand that that when a store invests and grows in a community, they're part of that community. We have to support them. And they're supporting us. They're going to continue to grow and they're going to bring a center of cultural awareness, art, history, and, and teaching our youth That's right. not to forget about our past. Right. But sure. don't spend your whole time looking in the rearview mirror, look at the windshield, how we move forward together. Sure. Congratulations yeah. on the, the reopening. I like to call it a grand opening because yeah. it's uh, about four times the size of your old yeah. store. That's right. And, and this is a blessing. Thank you very much to both of you for what you're doing in our community and your reinvestment here in North Columbia. Thank you. Peace and divine blessings, everyone. It is such an honor to be here. My name is Ambrinasia Williams, and I am a young goddess who is continuing to carry the torch forward from all of the knowledge that I am learning from this beautiful, beautiful establishment and the beautiful community that I am a part of. It is such a joy to, number one, not be a Columbia native at all, but to come down and find such an awesome couple as Brother Jimmy and Sister Angela. And yeah. just find a home. It's more than the house of Hathor. It is the home for me. Um, because it's so much love, like the mayor said, it's full of love, community, art, culture. I've learned so much and I'm continuing to thrive and grow. This is an awesome place to bring your youth to continue to learn even more and grow. I thank you so much for all that you have poured into me and we shall continue to thrive and move forward. And the store shall continue to get bigger because that is the goal. So thank you so much. You. It is so well deserved and it is an honor. Thank you. Greetings everyone, how's everyone doing? Right. You all look so beautiful out here for this beautiful occasion. I don't wanna, I don't have too much to say because when it comes to what the House of Hathor has meant to me and has done for me in my life, I could take a million years yes. and not come up with the correct words, verbiage, or phrases to describe what they've done for me. I found myself in this place. I don't call it the House of Hathor. I call it the home of Hathor. Yes. And Jimmy and Angela, You know, they, they aren't people, you know? Oh, they are royalty. And what they've done for not, not only me, but people around me. And you know, you go out into the world and you carry that reflection with you. And that energy you feel when you walk inside that door. And when you come out of that door, no matter who you are, the energy you feel will reverberate to others around you. You've got to believe. If you don't believe in the power of energy, the power of collective community, work, and consciousness, I dare you to walk through that door and walk back out and not be a better person. Exactly. Jimmy and Angela, <laughs> I can only laugh with y'all. <laughs> thank you for the opportunity, and just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you. I want to take the time to say uh, more than thank you. On this corner here, there's no other culture center on this corner but right here. One of the things that we have to be very clear about, that we need to be culturally balanced. And when I say we, humanity, humanity began in Mother Africa. We need to be culture about. This is a culture center. This is a culture center. When I met my brother Jimmy, as the mayor said earlier, it was in the community. 
My life has been community. That's been my life, community. And this is where I met Brother Jimmy at. I think it was on Fontaine several years ago. We was addressing some issues. And from there, the rest is history. My life has been centered around community, culture, politics, economics, et cetera. Out of the house of Hattor, I bear witness the young folks who has been resurrected, the adults who has been res resurrected in regards to wisdom and knowledge, in regards to counseling. It's all, we're talking counseling. We're talking from education, the economics, the politics. We're talking community collectiveness. Ongoing, I think it was recently, we was over in one community when some young folks got killed. This is what the house of Hattor been doing. So it's more than just a culture center. It is a community it was where the community can come and resolve their issues. At the, last, uh, at the last place over here where they had, I think we had several meetings, and I think the mayor was there, several meetings with all kinds of politicians. We must continue to raise the house of Hector. We must raise it. And as we raise it, let's focus on the children. Let's focus on the children. Let's continue as the children came in there, let's make sure they come in here. And as they come in here, let's pool our resources together collectively. Collectively. As one village, one community. They say it take a, what did it, what, what's it saying? Take a village to raise a child? Yes. Oh, who's gonna raise the village? Who's gonna raise the village? We. We have to move away from the I and we. Because that's what the I that's what the I is about. The I must be turned into we and we into them and them into they and they into us. And we all in this thing together, regardless of the fact. Because surely under the sky, we all must transition. We all must transition. But the question remains: what legacy will we leave behind for the children? And I'm emphasizing the children because we got some major issues today that center around the children. So we have to come together as a collective. No more lip service. No more lip service. Let's put aside our petty differences. Let's begin to engage ourselves in civil engagement. As Brother Jimmy went down to the city council last night, there should have been thousands of people down there. Let's begin to teach the children about local government, local politics, economics. Because again, it's necessary, critically necessary. And we must remember, in the final analysis, the question remains, what have you done to make it better for those that came before you? Welcome to the House of Hatter.